Welcome back to Dynamics Unplugged and welcome to the second episode of Dynamics A to Z in D365 Finance and Supply Chain Management. Today we're on the letter B and we're going to be focusing on bill of material journals. So using the bill material journals, what is the use case? Why am I interested if I'm a company who does manufacturing or more maybe interesting is kitting, light manufacturing? Instead of going directly to the bill of material journal, I'm going to start with the products to give some context. So if we go to a release product, like take, for example, our Drew Gray IPA, and we were to go to the engineering tab and we don't use the process of production orders or batch orders. That might be because the process is so simple, it's overly complicated to do those transactions in the system. We really just want to report inventory uh, from our kitting assembly, or maybe we're using a separate manufacturing execution or, man or entire production system. And we really just need to report transactions and consume or add inventory into Dynamics D365. You can see there's a report is finished button. So that same report is finished stage that we have when we're executing a production order or a batch order. We can manually process a report is finished and do the consumption of bill of material lines or formula lines and post those journals manually. Well, if I want somebody to do that and I'm not giving them access to the product master, a bill of material journal can do very similar. And I've actually used this for several clients. I remember one of my very first implementations in the early releases of AX 2012, we used bill of material journals to do a disassembly scenario. So essentially, this customer bought a purchase item from a vendor that came in and then was disassembled into its own parts, which would be used for their manufacturing or resell, and they had to serialize some of those items. So we used a bomb journal after an item was procured to do that disassemble scenario and, and put the component items into stock. So bomb journals can be both used for adding and subtracting a finished good or manufacturer item inventory. I'm going to create a new journal. You might have multiple inventory bomb journals for that type of purpose. Are you doing a disassembly type scenario and you want to segregate those transactions for audit or record keeping purposes? You may have two bill of material journal types. I'm going to leave this one as as manual. And then rather than create my journal lines, for example, putting in the finished good and then all of the components, I'm going to come up to the functions button and click report as finished and new. So the same form that we saw from the release product, I'll put in the item that I want to report. Make sure I pick the correct one. The quantity that I'm going to be reporting, this information all defaulted based on this item's default order setting. So one is the default site, 13 the warehouse, three is the standard lot size. I could edit that if necessary. It gave me the default bomb as well. If there are multiple bombs that I want to choose or toggle between the one that I'm going to use, I can record that here. The explosion type, and then if I'm going to post this journal, I'm going to deselect this because normally a good practice, especially if we're not reporting exact known quantities or we do need to record something like batch or serial numbers in consumption, we want to see those journal lines. So I'm going to uncheck post now and click OK. And it's going to create all the journal lines for me. So what item am I reporting as finished or using a bomb journal for, which is the D0001 quantity of three. And then what items are being consumed? The wiring harness M0001 and component 7, 200, 121 in their quantities. If for some reason I over or under issued, I could change that quantity, which is why I deselected the post now so I could make those edits. If I needed to record batch or serial numbers, I could do that at this stage as well. And then I can validate my journal to see if there is any mandatory missing data. This one did find a check in an info log, so I actually don't have enough inventory of my 
component seven to do a bomb journal for this item. Uh, so we can go ahead and quickly add inventory and then come back and report as finish this. OK, so I've now added inventory. If we look at the component seven item 201.21, we can see plenty of inventory in stock. We'll remove our message, we'll revalidate. Our journal's OK, and we can go ahead and post. Journal has now been posted, so we'll go ahead. We'll take a look at the D0001. We'll pull up the transactions. You will see that inventory transaction with a reference to bomb, so bomb journal rather than production order or batch order when it is transacted this way. The posting date, the physical date, and financial date were the same. The receipt is uh, purchased. There's no report as finished type concept, so you don't have the the difference uh, there between received and purchase. It goes directly to purchase, quantity of three, the cost amount for that, and the site and warehouse. And if we look at any of the components and look at the transactions for those, you'll see a reference to the bomb line that they were consumed in. So today, letter B, bomb journals in D365. See you tomorrow for letter C. Thanks.